Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we go over the next one in our stock plugin series, Auto Filter. Are you looking for a way to create filter effects that go anywhere from basic filter sweep all the way up to tempo synced complex rhythms? Auto Filter is going to be your best friend. So let's dive into the DAW, pick apart the stock plugin, and then listen to a couple examples. Okay, so here it is, Auto Filter. We're working in Studio One version 5.1. So if you're working before version five, you might see a different user interface and there might be a few more things here. But since we're moving forward through time, let's go over the new features too. A lot of this will still carry over to the previous versions of Studio One though. Let's dissect this plugin and we'll start from left to right. In the filter type section, you have two independent filters that you can choose, each with eight different models built right in. On the very left are your selectable buttons for changing the filter type that you're using. Underneath, you'll find chained and parallel. What these buttons will do is actually turn on the second filter and choose whether it's going in series, so filter one into filter two, or if we're working in parallel, filter one and filter two both receive a copy of the signal and apply their filters. And then those signals are combined later down the line. One thing you'll notice as a change with filter two is it does have a bypass option right here. Hitting the bypass will just turn the second filter off. With filter number two in bypass, it also deactivates cutoff two over here. And we'll get into what this does later. Next to the filter type buttons over here and on number two as well is the state variable filter. This is a slider that allows you to go from a low pass to a band pass to a high pass style filter and anywhere in between. When you have number two on as well and with certain filters selected, you also have the option down here. Up next in the filter section, you have your cutoff control here. This is the cutoff frequency for both filters one and two. Underneath that is the resonance control. And again, this is the control for both of the filters. The cutoff control goes all the way down to 30 hertz and all the way up to 16K. And of course, you can just punch in whatever you want. And the resonance goes from 0.1% all the way up to 100%. Next to both the cutoff and resonant controls are a few sliders, the ENV and the LFO slider. These adjust the modulation of either the cutoff or the resonance using a combination of the envelope slider and the LFO slider. You'll notice that with the envelope sliders, you can go all the way up to 100 or down to negative 100. Negative values are just phase inverted. And then the LFO slider modulates the envelope around its value. The same thing goes for the sliders down here for the resonance. So your cutoff adjustments are up on the top two sliders and your resonance adjustment is down with the bottom two sliders. To the right of that is the speed section. Here is the speed of the entire LFO built into auto filter. This has a range of a 64th note all the way up to four bars if you're working in sync mode and you have your song tempo set. If you don't want to lock to your grid, you can turn the sync mode off and just have it free running. Then you have the adjustments from 0.1 all the way up to 20. And you can see 20 is extraordinarily fast. Then underneath you have the envelope follow control. And this control adjusts the attack and release times of the volume envelope. This will affect the cutoff and resonant values. This goes anywhere from one millisecond all the way up to 400 milliseconds. The auto button underneath activates or deactivates the automatic envelope length selection. Up next is our LFO display. And this is our graphic interface where we can see what type of wave we're working with or what kind of steps we're working with. Down on bottom is our wave or step selector buttons. So you have your triangle wave, your sine wave, your sawtooth, your square wave, and then your step selector. And this is a 16 step filter. When you're in the 16 step mode, what you can do is actually you can click and drag or just click different values within your steps to create your own custom envelope. After that is the color section. And this is the state space overdrive that you can add into your auto filter. With the top control here, you can take the amount of saturation or color and increase the control to actually add some of that saturation into your signal. This goes all the way up to 100% with a fully distorted and colored signal, or 0% where there's no distortion going on. 
Underneath that is cutoff two. And what this does is controls the offset of filter two to filter one in its cutoff frequency. This is selectable from negative two octaves to positive two octaves. And of course, at the end is the global section where you have your makeup gain, your auto button, this way it automatically compensates any makeup gain needed, and your mix control. This way you can do some inline parallel processing. Okay, so now that we've gone over all of the controls of auto filter, let's pop it back into default and actually take a listen to what it's doing. I currently have auto filter on this piano and you may recognize this song before. This is the same song we did the Bit Crusher episode on. And if you didn't watch that one, I'll put a link up on the top or in the description of this video. So now we have auto filter on the piano. Let's just go ahead and solo the piano with auto filter in the default mode and hit play. So you can hear it's just kind of doing a basic filter sweep and it's going through the triangle waveform that we have. When we hit play, it takes one bar to go through an entire cycle because that's set by our LFO speed and you can hear it sweeping up and then down and then coming back again. If we wanted a little bit of a smoother sound, we could go for a sine wave and that goes like this. We could of course go with a sawtooth. On the extreme side, we could go with square. And with this one, I'm actually just going to increase our speed a little bit, maybe a lot of it. Then we have our 16 step mode at the end over here. I'll put the LFO back to about a bar and we'll just use this default pattern that's in here. This way you can kind of hear what it's doing. Let's take a deeper look into what's happening in this 16 step section. So if I go ahead and just draw everything at the bottom, we're gonna get a very cut off kind of sound. We're really filtering a lot of things out and there's not a lot of auto filtering going on. It's just filter all of it and kind of keep it here. There's also not a lot of modulation going on. This is what it sounds like. So you can hear it's taking all of the top end off. And if we look at our adjustments, that's because we have a low pass filter with the cutoff at 1K. That's what we're getting. If we then go and put everything into the middle or close enough to the middle, it sounds like this. So we're getting a little bit more, some of the top end has come back and we're not really filtering anymore. Then if we go all the way to the top, You can hear that it's opened up, but there's this ringing note way up at the top that is just the filter trying to modulate, but it's stuck at this one point. This thing can be very cool and creative because you can just draw whatever you want and get this really unique kind of sound. So let's go with this. So we got a big variance of sound that we were getting through here because of all of the different steps that are going on inside this filter. We have off beats that are almost all the way open, and then we have some other parts that are all the way closed and some bits in the middle. So it really makes this very unique kind of sound. Then we can go ahead and change the LFO speed to really vary things. So you can see we're just locked to the grid right now, but you do have a lot of different things that are happening inside this 16 step filter. So we've got this piano, let's just go ahead and go through some of the presets that are in here. Now, I'm gonna skip over bass lines one through seven because we're working on a piano and these are kind of built for bass lines, which we don't have right now. There is one later in the song, but we'll get to that. 
So let's just start down here with Beastie Drums, and we'll just start going through and hearing how they sound. That was just a few of the presets, and you can see there's some pretty crazy things that are going on in here. But let's try and think of how we could put this into the context of the rest of this song. I'm just gonna bypass it real quick, and we'll see what's going on here. If you remember, that starts off with just a piano and this bit crushed beat, and then it really opens up when the bass comes in and it's still these piano chords. Later on, some guitars come in. So let's see what we can do. We were talking about that bass line before, so let's go ahead and throw auto filter onto our bass line here. And let's just go with bass line five. Now let's see what this is doing. We'll bypass it so we can hear the bass. Okay, so a real crunchy distorted synthy bass. Let's put auto filter on and bass line five as our preset and hear how it sounds now. So it gives it a different kind of feel and more of like a electronic sound. This may not be exactly what we need for this song, but here, let's try bass line three. We just clicked through and found this one. Let's hear how this one sounds. Now I notice that this is set to dotted half notes. Let's put it right into the beat and see what happens. Not bad, this could be pretty fun. I'm gonna put it back into bypass for now because I have something else going on. Over here in my guitars, later on in the song, there's this part that I have going on. Let's listen to everything, and then I'll solo the part that I'm talking about, and then let's put auto filter on. So it's this little lead part that's going on with everything else that's happening, but maybe we can use auto filter to really create this new distinct sound for it. So I already have one on this track. Let's go ahead and open it up and we'll activate it. And I came up with a preset before. I was just messing around and kind of liked what we did. So let's go ahead and solo and bypass this and then we'll drop it in. So it's certainly interesting. It gives it almost a robotic kind of feel, which is sort of in line with what we were doing before. Remember, this is the song that had the bit crushed drums at the beginning. So it's almost video game style. Now let's hear how this sounds in the whole mix. Maybe the timing's off. Let's try a little faster. Not bad, and let's go ahead and try slower as well. Let's go two bars.
right there could be a cool part where we can use some of our automation to turn this effect off when everything kind of explodes a little bit more and the other guitar part comes in. In a recent video, I talked about how we can use automation in something just like this. I'll go ahead and put a link for that video in the description. So there it is, that's another one of the Studio One stock plugins, the Auto Filter. Now with State Space Overdrive built right into it, so you can add some extra saturation to the sounds you have going through the Auto Filter. Now that you know what all the controls are, what are some creative ways that you can use Auto Filter? Let me know in the comments below. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. For more, visit timplansbaum.com. And if you have a question, ask it in the comments and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.